this is our last segment with Joyce Dinkins, and I want to encourage you to listen to the previous three so you can get the full context of this marvelous conversation. So listen in and be blessed. All right, I, I I fully agree. I, I'm going to shift us because we really could stay in this land. Yeah, we could. But yeah, we could. I, I want to take you to David C. Cook because now yes. you had said that you had, well, well, first of all, you said with your encounter with God, you shifted from being secular to going into Christian uh, publishing. And then you found yourself at David C. Cook. Yeah, kind of. Well, for those of you who are not aware of, of who David C. Cook is, David C. Cook provides Sunday school materials to just about every Protestant Christian denomination there is. Yeah. And they'll tailor it depending on your denomination, especially Baptist, et cetera. So talk about your particular experiences with them. Well, it all started with um, with really uh, the thrust of it be, was had to do with my dad's continual conversation about the fact that Jesus wasn't white. Now, mm. that was a conversation that I heard when I was knee high. All right. Uh, and my my dad's dissatisfaction with uh, those in the body who would pretend that he was European American. So my dad was dissatisfied with uh, with that. And I'll just say that oh, as only God can do, uh, as I left out of the secular work, news writing and marketing communications and public relations work, uh, because I really um, had come to understand who Jesus is, as my savior, mm -hmm. I wanted to serve him. Mm -hmm. And I had I had uh, uh, enjoyed my secular service to a great extent. Uh, it had been exciting. I was writing news about Watergate at NBC News when, when Watergate was happening and the papers uh, were being turned over and that's a lot of history. But um, I really felt called to do something different and um, as the Lord would have it, again, I, I see him orchestrating the, the hope and the activities of my life. Um, David C. Cook was looking for an editor. Well, they weren't really looking when I was looking for to get on with David C. Cook or some Christian publishing mm -hmm. uh, outfit. Um, it took three years of praying I mm. found myself in a completely different field, earning a living um, and waiting and praying. But the church that I attended, um, Second Baptist Church of Wheaton, Illinois, the, one of the associate ministers there, uh, Reverend Bob James Whit, he and his wife, Norma, um, saw me, this new Christian, uh, early 30s, okay, 32, 33 years old, and baby Christian. Um, and they said, uh, I mean, they invested in me. And they, uh, just because that's what they, they did, and that's what they do. And so he worked at Cook and had been. And he, along with... Um, uh, this gentleman's name is escaping me now, but he and this other gentleman, a European American man, um, were serving the historic black denominations. So over a, a period of three years of prayer and the and Whit's awareness of of what I was doing in the church, I was writing the church history, I was presenting it at a program, I was uh, ministering to the children, learning the Bible along with the five-year-olds and teaching and what have you. Um, and Whit let me know at just the right time when my other job was becoming, uh, we talked a little bit about this earlier, uh, difficult. Whit let me know that, the, that Cook was looking for a Black editor. 
Mm. Uh, that's the that's the first in 1987 that I knew that the Lord had planned for me to be an editor. I've been writing, writing news, uh, like I said, marketing communications, PR, but I had not considered myself an editor. But um, it, it's the testimony is too long to try to give you everything that the Lord did, but suffice to say that the Lord opened the door at just the right time. I interviewed for the position and one of the things that I had to do in order to attain the position was to provide a sample of what I would do with the Sunday school curriculum, what I would ask to be done, what I would direct, what I would edit mm. in their existing curriculum in order to make that curriculum um, serviceable, uh, relevant, a good fit for Black churches throughout the United States, not just Baptist churches, but Church of God in Christ, Church mm. of God or Jesus Christ, um, African Methodist Episcopal, uh, all stripes of Baptists, including pro progressive Baptists. So they wanted to know what I would do and what I asked with the materials that they gave me to mark up was I said, turn, change these blonde haired, blue eyed angels, change the skin color, the eye color, and the hair texture, because this is not the truth. Now, I didn't know a lot of Bible at the time, but I knew that much. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, because uh, Jesus and, 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 you know, well, I could talk a lot about that. But, uh, and then I said, change Jesus. You got to make his skin brown. You got to make his eyes brown. This is a, uh, this is a, God in the flesh, uh, yes, he is spirit and we worship him in spirit and in truth. And the truth is that he's a uh, Mediterranean, if you want to say it that way, or Afro-Asiatic Jew, not, not a Swede. And it's interesting that so I, you do read the Bible and it alludes to what Jesus looks like. He looks nothing like the common portrayal of this model looking uh, white person. He was a man of sorrow. That's right. With grief. He had no beauty that we would esteem him, right? So he wasn't That's Robert it. Redford. That's he wasn't right. A Robert Redford. Okay. That's right. He, um, uh, you know, so. I knew that much. And so that's what I presented, that that's one of the things that I would change. And I'd also ask for other representation in the content, representation around the history and our stories, uh, rather than the uh, very good literature that was being produced from the mass audiences. That they wanted to do something for Black folk, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, that's what I said. So that on the basis of that, I was hired. Mm. But it was still, um, I'll say, uh, it's interesting about this whole thing with diversity, equity, and inclusion. And, you know, like at Our Daily Bread, the senior management is very much um, nurturing diversity, equity, inclusion, and a global culture because we are a global ministry. And they recognize, right, and, and provide representation. But that's not been an easy journey for all of the Christian publishers to engage in. They're working on, on it. Uh, but I'll say back in those days, even though the heads of all the denominations gathered, J. Alfred Smith and um, Bishop uh, Winbush, and um, um, I can't name all the names, and said, okay, David C. Cook, we will purchase curriculum customized for our needs if you will do this mm. and and i was there i was present and leading it was, so that's what we'll do but it took years to uh try to um uh, uh, implement I, I'm, I'm i'm kind of a um i've been slow to understand that just because we have a vision doesn't mean it's going to happen. Well, it's, all of us are where you are, so don't just put that on you. But but let yeah. me kind of put a pin with what you just said. Yeah. You have named one of the, 
icons in uh, the life of the Progressive National Baptist Convention. And you know, I'm a part of that convention. I'm the mission director of that convention. J. Alfred Smith, Sr. Yes. Um, talk to us, because, you know, we talked offline about this. Talk to us about your involvement with Progressive. And the reason both of you are watching this, it's not about me tooting the horn of Progressive. But if you think about, I, I, I'll give you this example. You look at Judson Press and some of the material that's been printed by Black writers. Yes. Probably 80% of it progressive. has come from progressive authors. Right. And progressive at one time had its own publishing house. Part PNB. Own, PNB, PNB, that's right. So PNBC has been instrumental in the development of African-American Christian thought and really has been at the forefront, even of some of what you said in terms of when you're talking about Jesus is Black, et cetera, et cetera, the uh, progressives. And I think the uh, AME church, because I'm trying to remember, I think Kane Hope Felder was Baptist. I'm not sure. Uh huh. But, but uh, you know, we've been at the forefront. So kind of talk about your involvement with PNBC, I guess. Bless you. PNBC you. and all of that. As it well, you know, again, it's just it's just uh, God's orchestration of um, of everything. Because uh, I couldn't have uh, pursued this, made this up, thought this up. But uh, the Progressive National Baptist uh, Publishing House, uh, Reverend Whit and Jim English was the gentleman's name. They recognized the that they were publishing needs unfulfilled. And they recognized out of relationship that there were opportunities to serve these vast audiences and that it could be fruitful uh, for David C. Cook um, as well as for the denominations. And uh, so uh, when I started with, uh, with the editor's role, um, part of my role was to work with the Progressive National Baptist on their newspaper. Um, and uh, I want to say it was um, the Progressive or Progressive or, uh, Baptist Progress. I can't remember the exact name. It was either Progress or the Voice. I don't. I don't quite remember which one it was. Okay. Okay. And so I became became familiar by serving and interacting in these relationships. I became familiar with uh, and was. Um, responsible for meeting with an advisory council. The, on that advisory council were the heads of the denominations um, and, um, and and Dr. James Perkins. He was the head of the advisory council, mm -hmm. Dr. James Perkins was. And um, he was really pulling for us to do well. And I remember J. Alfred Smith leaning back in his chair. <laughs> And uh, and looking at me, and uh, I believe uh, Dr. Peoples was there, uh, mm -hmm. Winbush, and uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bishop and Mrs. Winbush were there, and others. Um, I don't know if Otis Moss the second was there or not, but uh, we we had meetings, and they listened, and um, then they made their requests, and. By 1989, the literature that um, they the, these denoms had requested us to develop, I believe with guarantees of purchasing it in bulk, uh, the first premier editions uh, came off the press. Uh, I'll say this about publishing. It takes time. It has taken some time. It's taken me decades to see some of the things that we envision actually happen. And sometimes it's a bit of a, um, a push and a struggle. Why should we be surprised? This is true. Should we be surprised? No. Um, but um, I I'll leave it at, I'll leave it at that. 
I'll leave it at that. But the progressives, I worked on the newspaper and I had the privilege as a new editor and I wasn't all that. I don't claim to be all that now, 30 plus years later. I just thank God for the opportunity to serve and to learn some things and share some things in relationship with others who seek to publish. So um, we did um, help with some books. Uh, Dr. Fred Lofton was a prolific author at that time. I never worked specifically on Lofton's books, except maybe just some minor editorial work. I did get to work with, uh, with J. Alfred Smith's book. I don't know that I did the best job that I could have done, but I did my best. It was a was good a book because I have it. It was a good book. I, I, I can. <laughs> okay. 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 I'm saying, I'm not saying he is what, what he did with anything wrong with it, but you know, editors are critics. We're critics. You know from working with me that, you know, we pick. I, I was going to hold that, but uh, <laughs> when you go through Joyce Dinkins' finishing school of editing, uh, you become a real writer. And I, I've i been through the finishing school. I've seen the red march, y'all. I felt the pain. <laughs> uh, I, 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 okay. I, I'm sick. <laughs> but seriously, that's how you grow. So I I was going to hold that, but since you went there. I... <laughs> well, it's it's called polishing. Yes. You know, yes. You know it's just, it's polishing. And uh, it you take something that's silver or gold uh, or bronze, and it's worth polishing. Yeah. And, and the thing is that I always say to editors, we travel in packs. This is one of my sayings. Mm -hmm. We travel in packs. And so I have people in my pack who are, who are holding me accountable for catching and polishing so that they can then take it and put even more sheen on it, right? So we, we work in, a, in, a, in that uh, collaborative way and we hold one another accountable for all of the, the stylistic details and um, uh, theological uh, uh, doctrinal accuracy and uh, you know that's that's the way it goes. We hold well, each other. Well, let me do this for the listeners. First of all, we're going to get into some more of the publishing aspect because, uh, and I'll say this to you: yeah. you have. I believe the Lord placed you in these positions to be a door opener, to be, I guess, a voice of reason. Um, and to just be a blessing because the areas in which you work, and I'll say this, um, are not necessarily easy because when you talk about working cross-culturally, whether it's Christian, whatever it is, um, you're talking about cutting across sometimes stereotypes, sometimes knowing, sometimes awareness. And that is difficult landscape to traverse, especially when, and I teach about this when I teach various courses, theologically, um, as Christians, I'm not talking about what we believe about Jesus, what we, you know, the basics, but theologically in some areas, as it involves social justice, as it involves other things, we are not monolithic. And so some people don't see the context in their Christianity. They just straight, the Bible says, without looking at the context of what the Bible says. So when you start having those conversations, it becomes difficult. But you were in a place, and based upon what you said in your background, and all the things that we covered, grandparents, parents, you were in a place where you could credibly argue and at least raise your hand and say, have you, cons and, and I know your style by now. <laughs> so you probably have said, well, have you, con I can hear you now. Well, have you considered? <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you want to connect this with the other segments, I want to encourage you to go to part three which is the one that goes before this one. And with all things, continue to subscribe, 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 view, 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 share, share, share. Thank you so much.